Hi everybody. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I had mentioned that YouTube had changed their YouTube partnership program policies. Now to monetize your YouTube channel, you need at least 1,000 subscribers and about 4,000 hours of view time. Well, I'm still quite a bit short of some of those goals, especially the subscription. I need still about 500 subscribers. So I'm putting out the pitch again at the beginning of the video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy what I'm doing with Dorothy here, or even if you're a little bit curious, I have uh, about 60 videos now for you to watch, and uh, I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's about uh, 4 o'clock, a little after, uh, on the 13th of February. Continuing work on Dorothy here. Today is called Mind the Gap Day. So my entire focus today is going to be to try to get the gaps right, both between the bonnet and the body, the bonnet and the doors, and then the sill to all of those. So uh, I struggled with it a little bit in the last visit to the garage over on Saturday. Essentially kind of stopped and turned over and, and got the strengtheners welded in. First thing I'm going to do is put in the bonnet locating brackets that I took off because they were essentially destroyed on Dorothy, her original ones. I got the, uh, the black cars, so I'm going to weld those in. I have to do some prep and get that area cleaned up and get that ready for welding. So that'll be the first thing that'll help me support the bottom of the bonnet, or excuse me, the back of the bonnet. And then uh, I'll have to deal with the adjustments up the front here and try to get uh, the bonnet all set in, and then we're going to go from there. <clears throat> Alright, so I got the brackets here, and uh, from the red car they were essentially shot um, so I didn't I didn't save them to show you the before and after but these brackets essentially just attached to the side of the tub in the front and the little cones the rubber cones I'll show you here when I get to that point on the bonnet just kind of fit down and they just kind of help align the bonnet um, so I'm going to clean up the rust off the back uh, I'm not going to be too concerned with the rest of the stuff it's pretty straight I don't really need to bang anything uh, clean up the, uh, the rust and get them ready to weld in. <laughs> Alright, so I got the brackets primed, cleaned up and primed on the inside here. They're, uh, they're drying there. It takes Stuff dries pretty fast. And I'll show you the spots that I prepped on the body. There's the, the one for the driver's side. You can kind of see those swirls in there. Those were the where the uh, spot welds got drilled out. Shiniest piece of metal on the car right now. And the other side, which is obviously going to be the same, but the other side. I do have one little hole there. Um, you can see right, right there above that one drilled out. I don't remember if I did that while I was drilling this out or what, but uh, there's also some ripples in here. Uh, dents probably from when the bonnet got dropped a little too heavy maybe. Not real sure, but uh, but I don't intend on fixing that because you can't get to it. And it'll be covered up anyway. So I'm going to uh, shoot these for primer real quick, those two spots, and then uh, wait for that to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to take these support brackets out that I have across the doors because I don't need them now, especially since the body's bolted down and it's not going to flex anymore. Um, when I when I go to take the body back off, I'll, I'll look at putting them back on there, but for now they're kind of in my way. So, uh, there we go. Alright, so I got the other side in already. Um, I had some penetration problems on the first weld I did, so I cranked up the current a little bit on the welder. Uh, story of my life with the penetration problems with the welder, but I figure uh, a pretty thick piece of metal here, and even though the, the bulkhead here is thin, you know, it's going to be going to be what it is. So I just got the, essentially did some marks on here to try to get this uh, lined up and relatively flat and there's a divot right here and I decided to center it up right in that divot. Um, there's no real measurements I could take. I did have some dirt outline and line that up and, and then kind of just took a picture of it to eyeball it after that and everything seems like it's aligned good. <laughs> Clean the paint off inside of that one hole, weld the heck out of that down, 
and then I'll be able to move around hammering and dollying, or just hammering, I mean, if I have to um, flatten anything out, but it's, uh, it's pretty flat. I had to do a lot of the work on the, on the bench to take care of that. So I'm gonna tack this in, then I'll come over on this side and clean one up over there, and then just move around and tack everything in. Investigate the uh, the hole on the other side, but I that's pretty much in there. So I just welded over it. Um, there's no way to get. Well, there is a way, obviously, but I don't really have an interest to get in there. So, um, so yeah. So now the bonnet should have some place to rest, and uh, I'll get these welds cleaned up at least a little bit real quick, and then uh, go from there. I got the brackets in uh, there's that one I can't get the uh, grinding wheel inside there and uh, I keep forgetting my Dremel to bring over but that's what I'll be using to do that got a hole there oops hole there that I'll fill with some weld metal uh, the other one was better welding uh, not quite sure why uh, but again I can't get the inside part and then this uh, hole there's the inside part the bottom plug well that you see there that's really really messy that was the one big big hole that I had to fill um, so I just didn't finish grinding that down I started to lose the uh, paper on the or the sand on the paper disc so uh, another little hole there that I got to fill but otherwise not too bad so a little bit longer than I would hope to take it's, uh, it's quarter after six now what I'm going to do is I'll lower the bonnet loosen up the uh, or lower the bonnet and adjust the height on it using the uh, the locator brackets back here as I hope they're supposed to be and then um, I'll put those little metal pieces in there as like little metal guides I'll put them in there so that the the cones don't fall through and then I'll try to set the height of the bonnet back here and then I'll start playing with the front to try and close up the gap that I'm gonna have at the sailboard here um, so that's the uh, that's that's the way ahead all right so um, first adjustment you can see that that's obviously not level at all, um, but the other side is, and it fits actually really well. Uh, I adjusted the cone. It's just a matter of cinching up a a, uh, a nut to uh, tighten the cone up, so that fits just fine. The problem is, is that the bonnet is crooked. Uh, pretty hard to see here, I think. Uh, so what that's preventing is the cone over on the other side from falling into the to the. Um, area that it can I see if I can get in there with the light yeah so you can see obviously that's off causing the whole bonnet to be crooked um, so that's cool I don't have a problem with that because it's quite adjustable so now the next step will be to loosen up these bolts up front here that I tightened down the other day and um, in conjunction with that trying to push the whole thing back so hopefully this will uh, it'll get a little cleaner now that that uh, a lot of lining up and 
Well, I was going to say maybe this is why I have that gap there, but I don't want to sound that confident, so we'll see. Well, Ellen, you are right. So I'm not sure what the wheel wells and the bonnet should look like. I have the black cars, but uh, it's at the house, not here. So what's happening is I showed you the large gap that I was getting here and pretty much no gap or, or the gap that I wanted over on the passenger side. So if you see that, the inner of the wheel well there, um, and obviously the bonnet's up here, uh, that goes straight, essentially straight up and down, but it's all chewed up, right? It's pretty, pretty yucky. Uh, if you look at the passenger side, let me walk you over here. If you look at the passenger side, it's got a flare to it. Um, that really doesn't look chewed up. I don't know if that's correct. Um, but then again, this side fits and that side doesn't. So what's happening is I'm trying to push the bonnet back to close the gap up and it won't go anywhere. Why? Because if you look here at the um, bulkhead, looks okay. There's some dings and, and stuff in there, but nothing major. But if you come over to the passenger, or excuse me, to the driver's side, you could see the huge scraping and everything that went on. And then this piece right in here specifically is where um, this piece up here is rubbing. So I'm going to flare that out towards the center of the car like the other side is. Sorry that the light's kind of crappy here. And, uh, and continue on with that. And then I'll, I'll look up or see if I can figure out what those are really supposed to look like for when I go to do some repairs in there. So the, the bonnet's in pretty good shape. It's dirty as heck. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with the, the minimal rust and everything that's on it. Got a pretty good bang up in the nose that I'll have to knock out, but uh, otherwise it's, uh, it's pretty strong. So continuing on. All right, it's about uh, 7.30 or so, and uh, between not understanding really how this adjustment works and just generally not feeling so hot still, uh, I'm going to call it a night with the work that I've done. So... Um, like I had showed you, I forgot my flashlight over here, like I had showed you, the gap between the wheel well and the, and the um, bulkhead on this side is, is essentially zero, so I can't push the bulkhead, or excuse me, the, the um, bonnet back any further, and it's leaving this huge gap here, which would translate into a huge gap at the door. So, if you look over here, on the passenger side, uh, it's pretty wide open over there so that's a whole sorts of room um, the original cars had a little uh, rubber membrane kind of thing there that that clipped in you can kind of see the remnants there the one I just pulled it off uh, tonight while I was playing with it so what's happening is is obviously this isn't working so I can't get the bonnet back any further because it's running into the bulkhead what I was nervous about was that I had the body on just just totally wrong. Um, but, you know, given the gap there, maybe not so wrong that it wasn't within the adjustment. So I loosened up and or removed every bolt in the front here uh, and just left the two bolts in the back that had no bearing on any of the replacements or anything that I did. And thankfully, I still couldn't get the thing to come in anywhere near us having the same exact problem. So I don't think it's a body uh, rotation issue or anything like that. So I'm going to pause it real quick. I'll lift the, the bonnet up and show you the inside supports and uh, what I need to study up on. So hold on a sec. All right. So the bonnet is supported, at least for the Mark II, is supported. You got a cross member that goes across the top there, and uh, that just provides some strengthening. Just two attachment points here on the inside of the of the well, and you could probably see that. Um, and the same thing on the other side over there. And that just prevents bracing side to side. And then the other part you have, I'll show you the passenger side because I got a better shot of it, is this big tube that runs all the way down. Well, that tube eventually connects us to the front hinge assembly. So there's one, two, three, four attachment points for that. These guys here, and you can see I sprayed them with WD-40, those two there, that guy there, and that little guy right there. 7 16 bolts. So what that would allow, at least from what I assume, is allow you to kind of rotate and move and, and do whatever you wanted to do with the bonnet relative to those mounting points. So I loosened these up over here 
really didn't get any play whatsoever. What I need to do is loosen up the ones on the other side as well, I'm sure. Um, and maybe be able to just kind of twist the bonnet as a whole. Um, but like I said, I'm sure there's a procedure for this in the workshop manual. I haven't looked at that at all. Um, so I intend to go ahead and do that uh, tonight or, or tomorrow over the next couple of days before I get back over here. And maybe that will help me solve this problem here. No obvious uh, twisting that I could see where the paint's been scratched on those bolt holes or anything like that. But maybe it's just subtle enough just to, just to mess it up. But it's obviously um, a problem. And, uh, you know, the door was running in over here. You can kind of see. Actually, let me uh, pause real quick. I'll show you where that is. Anyway, you can see here um, right on the edge of the bonnet where the paint's all messed up. And uh, there's even there's even some some metal kind of bends a little bit there. And if you look at the door, the door is not too good. You look at this hinge, that hinge is not aligned. That might just be something I can tighten. I don't know. It's the first time I'm kind of noticing this stuff. Um, but anyway, so maybe I thought because the check strap on the door broke, maybe that was causing all that. But who knows? Maybe it's been more than that. Maybe the whole bonnet is kind of twisted a little bit. Um, so anyway, make a long story short. Short. Uh, that's what I'm going to focus on the next time over here in the interim. I'll get studied up and uh, see what uh, what the workshop manual says about adjusting this stuff and, and how this proper way to go about it. Hopefully it's it's just a matter of, of kind of twisting that a little bit and pushing one side in and pulling the other side out and then the whole thing will go back. So we'll see. Uh, otherwise, that's all I've got. I just did a blog update, I think last night. I think I posted it last night on uh, my previous chip. So... Uh, there's that if you want to go visit the website www.roundtailrestoration.com it was on landing the bonnet and getting that bonnet all aligned and everything like that obviously still some work to go uh, otherwise thanks for your comments I've had some really good comments lately a lot of big help um, from a couple people Ellen and uh, a couple other guys on penetra weld penetration and one guy gave me a heads up on this bonnet adjustment um, sorry that I, that I don't remember the, the viewers names I'll, I'll try to get better with that, but I appreciate all those comments. They're, uh, they're really helping out and really starting to grow in number, uh, which is really nice for me because uh, it lets me cheat a little bit, to tell you the truth. Like I've said before, uh, you won't live long enough to learn from, from every mistake possible, so you got to rely on others to uh, learn from their mistakes. So, Otherwise, please uh, hit the like button, and again, uh, putting out the pitch for the subscriptions. Trying to, trying to go for a thousand and uh, I appreciate, regardless, I appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate all your comments and of course I appreciate you uh, watching and uh, sending me good vibes as I try to slowly but surely bring her in for the home stretch here. So have a good night, have a good rest of your week and uh, hopefully I'll see you this weekend. Cheers.